real quick. So this is Patrick, right. Patrick Bet David. Now we made fun of him because he's kind of anti-college and we made fun of him last time for that because his friend mm -hmm. sent his daughter to college and now his friend's daughter hates him. And we're like, so your daughter got educated and realized you're an asshole. Oh, right. That guy. Yeah. Okay. So we got, a, we got a lot of hate comments. So keep them coming, boys and girls. We love them. But Patrick Bet David is going to do exactly what Rachel Cruz did. Only he's got a better writer. <laughs> but this is the same bullshit. Watch this. Years ago, everybody was talking about that a market crash was coming. I've done a couple of videos on that. Everyone's like, oh my God, what if it happens? What if it doesn't? Now everybody's talking about it's going to be soft landing. There's not going to be any recession. And there's one thing that people forgot about the saying, only the paranoid survive. So people are now, it's totally fine. Look at the market. It's near all time highs. But is it really? If you were to pull out the top seven stocks, when you see the numbers on this, it's staggering. And on top of that, there is an indicator of when a recession actually hits. And it isn't what we're raising interest rates the fed it happens after we stop raising rates and wait till you see how long it takes for the market to crash and by the way i got a bunch of other data to share with you but uh i've known one thing for sure having been in the financial industry since the day before 9 11 only the paranoid survive and those who are way too confident are typically wrong and those who are way too cocky are also typically wrong which is why you shouldn't listen to him boys and girls because he is way too confident that there's a market crash coming <laughs> and he is way too cocky about it right so he's gonna make this argument and i'm just gonna make it for him. for those of you who haven't seen i'll actually do this whole video at some point but he's gonna make this argument about the fed right uh raising interest rates and it's kind of funny because if you go back this is actually just a uh, M1 chart. This is just money being pumped into the Fed. This is one of his arguments. So this is basically, um, this is the economy uh, excluding like savings, right? It's just money being pumped in. And so here's a lot of the COVID relief stuff, right? Came in here where this big spike happens. But these gray bars are recessions, right? And what we'll do is hold this at um, he's going to show you that and he's going to show you this. And this is his big argument right here. So these gray bars are recessions. He's going to narrow it down. So this goes all the way to 55. We'll just narrow it down to the last. We'll send it down to the 90s. So these gray bars are recessions. So this was the recession okay. uh, under Bush when uh, the Iraq war, when they invaded Kuwait. And what he's going to show you is these, this blue line is the federal funds rate. What the Fed, the rates, the Feds does. So he's saying what happens is they raise the rate. And then when they start coming down on the rates, because the economy's cooled off, this is the point where you have an inverted yield curve and they're trying to cool it off. That's when you see the recession is when they're lowering rates. Right? And he's going to go back and say, well, look, see, historically, that's what's happened. Well, as you can see, like we said before to Rachel, there are periods like here, 95, where the rates were high for a long time and they lowered them a couple times. And, and that did not occur in that moment. And nothing happened. And then right. this is the 2008 housing crisis. Well, why did it spike up from 2004 all of a sudden is because... We were at war with Iraq and Afghanistan. And there was a, right. an economy that started to kind of get out of control. So they raised rates. So this was the big one, right? Was the Great Recession, which lasted over a year, right? By this calculation. This is the Federal Reserve of St. Louis. And then this is the pandemic. Right, so, right. Well, and like you said before, that one was a long recovery. So depending on kind of how you want to argue that, that. Yeah. You know, but that's going to be his his argument is when they when they bring the rates down, when the Fed finally does that, you're going to see a recession. Right. The problem mm -hmm. is, is if you look back historically past the last 30 years, if we go back, you know, a lot longer. Let me see if it'll let me stretch this. There we go. So if we go back. You'll see that's not always the case. 
there are times when we have raised and dropped rates, raised and dropped rates, raised and dropped rates, raised and dropped rates, where nothing's happened. Right? And that's what, right. The, that's what the Fed usually calls a soft landing. It's basically, we cooled the economy, but we didn't have a recession. So it's not necessarily an indicator of recession, but that's his argument is that this is an indicator that there's a recession coming, right? And I'm going to skip that whole argument because he's going to go into this long-winded nonsense. And I'm going to skip right to where he ends the argument, where he ends the first part of the argument right here. Because what do you think happens in the middle of this long rant about you need to be prepared for a recession and a market crash? Well, certainly he's going to have the answer of how to save the day, and I'm pretty sure it's a, a sales pitch of some sort. Well, maybe it is. Let's see. Let's see what he's let's see what his solution is. You don't have another case study for somebody to say, "Well, here's what's going to happen." Well, it's totally okay. Well, don't worry about it. Based on what? Based on what case study can you speak so confidently, saying nothing's going to happen? So, look, I've been in the financial industry since nine eleven, the day before nine eleven, and I've owned stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate. Crypto, gold, you name it, I've owned it. But the one thing that's very important part of my portfolio all these years is gold. I love having a percentage of my net worth in gold that I have. So in the middle of his, the market's going to crash, everything's going to shit video, he does a big pause break for like four or five minutes where he pitches a company that sells gold. <laughs> Why? Because gold will protect you. It's an inflationary protection, da 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 da. Which isn't true. A lot of people are all about that. You know, there's um there's a gentleman that I work with that's always being like, Hinger, have you gotten into gold? Oh, I right. sent you all these gold stocks and these gold funds, you know, and and I have not. Yeah. And he's made money off of the things that he is in it seems and that's good for him but i'm no it's just not my it's you, not my thing but you see my point is but, i have a solution i'm working for this company to sell gold i need to create the problem to get you to buy it it's a good sales tactic it's the whole wolf of wall street joke where he tells the guy sell me the pen and the one guy doesn't he's like well do you want this pen it's a great pen and He's like, no. And he tells the other guy, sell me this pen. And the other guy says, hey, would you sign this for me? And he says, well, I don't have a pen. I'll sell you this one. You create the need for the item you're trying to get rid of. That's what they're doing. Right. They're good salespeople. But do they really know what they're talking about in finance? No, he's just making a bunch of shit up. He just got better writers to well, look at all this data. And then he throws a bunch of data at you that doesn't say what he thinks it says or what he says it says. And then he says, see, but a market crash is going to happen. And then boom, you know what you need? You need to buy gold at incredibly high rates and fees because I get a kickback. Right. And I'm going to tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, um, U.S. bonds, treasuries and bonds do better in inflationary periods than gold. And they do better overall. So U.S. bonds and tips outperform gold. They've done, if we go just back to uh, the last 10 years, they've done close to like six or seven percent as where gold's done 4.25 percent per year for the last 10 years right a lot of these guys when they're selling gold will go they're like oh well in the last 20 years it's done 8.35 percent and better under inflation it's like yeah but so bonds and bonds are risk-free as where gold is not us so anyway i just wanted to get to that point where when you hear the recession stuff they're not this is that we might be heading towards a recession we might not be kind of hard to say right and your thing is what, what i'm hearing you saying is that some of these things um they are things that happen before we've had recessions but we've also had these things happen without recessions, recessions. therefore they could be pointing us to one but they could happen as sort of a part of a soft landing or you know, they could happen without a recession coming. Well, and like he began, it's right. And like he began when somebody's this confident, they're probably bullshitting you and trying to sell you something. And then what does he do? He is really confident about a recession's coming and the market's going to crash and oh, buy gold. So he does what he warns you to be careful of at the beginning of the video. <laughs> then he just goes and does it. I mean, I think it's hilarious. Right. 
Uh, anyway, um, do you want to do one quick last clip and then we'll get out of here? Only if it's quick because it's I'm getting quick. very hungry. Yeah, it's okay. quick. Um, this one is a day break. <laughs>